On the menu today, it's Battle Chess versus Battle Chess, as you've probably never seen it before. Queenie Fractic? <laughs> He's riding a horse, not a dog. Oh, hello Chip Dippers, welcome to Retro Recipes. Now, we recently had a lot of retro fun pitting different systems against each other at chess. And whilst I won't spoil the conclusions in case you want to watch those videos after this one, let's just say they were surprising. What? I was not expecting that. Wow. Oh, and here's how I got the machines to play each other. It should be possible to take the moves from one computer and type them into the other computer. That computer will think it's the human that thought up that move when actually it came from the other machine. Now, a lot of people said they wished there was a modern version of Battle Chess. Yeah, don't we all? Well, actually, guess what? There is. Battle Chess Game of Kings was released a few years ago and is still up to date on Steam for PC. And it's actually by the same developer who made the Amiga version 32 years ago, Interplay. That's a pretty special thing in and of itself and very old school. So I thought it would be fun to play two games of Battle Chess versus Battle Chess 1988 versus 2015 style and see if the Amiga might be a triumphant underdog. No offense, Puppy Fractic. Okay, everybody ready? Then sit, good viewers. Welcome. Oh my gosh, big meanie. That'll teach us. Yes, hello. Wave back, puppy fractic. Let's look at the equally dramatic Amiga intro. Oh, that's, that's it. Oh well, I still love it. So let's get this started. For the first of two games, we'll set both to their default easiest settings. See, in this video, we're not really going to get too bogged down in algorithms and reasons why. Instead, let's just have fun and see whether the old computer can beat the new. Now, unfortunately, one of the many things that Interplay changed is the player colors, and there's no way to actually start the game the other way around. So just keep in mind that the PC is always playing from the top of the board down and the Amiga from the bottom up. Bottoms up. So what I'm doing here is manually duplicating the move that the Amiga made on the PC. So let's see the PC's response as we start to play our game. And as always, I'll edit out all the waiting in between moves. Sometimes with high settings, the Amiga and the PC can take many minutes, up to half an hour per move. I'll cut that out for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Pardon you. And the Amiga started with what's known as the Rayti opening. It's kind of a quiet way to start a game. So <laughs> uh, I take that back. Now, while the computers get started with their moves, I should point out that the Amiga version supports modem play and the PC version supports internet play. And if I had been able to hook them both up with the old and new technology, we could have actually automated this game. But unfortunately, uh, the new one doesn't really understand 1200 board modem. Hmm. I think she's bored. <gasps> 
Having said that, I have got a new video planned where we're going to play the Atari ST versus the Amiga via the modem and finally solve the debate of which computer is best. Probably. Got to say, I think the Amiga Queen is a bit sexier. Excuse you, Pushy. For some reason, the bishop is polishing his helmet to the sound of Lady Fractic's screwdriver sounds. Wait. Yeah, you should run. See, she's getting as far away from you as she can. But that illustration really does show why the queen is the most powerful piece on the board, arguably. Alright, so both queens are in play now, and well, that's nice. The PC actually tells you that you have a castle move available. It's been quite a quiet game so far, though, and neither team has. Okay, I take that back as well. The Amiga didn't need to do that, he was quite armless. Monty Python, anyone? But now we get to see how the PC animation compares. Obviously vastly superior technically, although a little violent and lacking some of that humour and charm of the Amiga version, in my humble opinion. Then again, the Amiga did chop someone's arms and legs off, so hmm. Anyway, now the PC gets its own back, as Bishop takes Bishop. Oh my. Remember kids, don't drink. Yeah, regardless of who wins the chess game, in my mind the Amiga is winning on the entertainment stakes. Yeah, you can see what I mean. Okay, actually, that was pretty good. Oh yeah, now moving that knight to that position was really a mistake on the part of the Amiga. This knight is being captured by a prawn. The pawn. Pa uh, sorry, wait. Pawn. Pawn? Pawn, yes. What's a pawn? Like a pawn shop. Pawn. Yes. Pawn. See, I've learnt it now. And here's the Amiga animation of the knight being killed by the pawn. Oh, pr little guy. Ooh. And the PC responds by bringing its little guy forward to face the queen. Oh dear, poor little guy. That said, the Amiga's not doing too badly. And this move is going to give the Amiga check against the PC. Not that that counts for anything, really. Oops, well, no point crying over spilt bricks. Let's see how the uh, PC animation compares. Yeah, he looks like me after two months of lockdown. <sighs> it's 
So let's see the PC's version of Lady Fractic versus... Oh, is she okay? Yeah, good idea. Go, go check on her, mate. Cougar, stop stealing my ideas into play. Or well, either way, the PC's Lady Fractic twin sister is not having any of that and immediately puts the Amiga in check. But the king finds some protection. And the Amiga Knight lines itself up to take the PC Queen, and of course, the Queen retreats. Now, if I had one major complaint about this game, it's this. You don't really see it in my edit, but they do this every minute. I've had to watch this bishop drink gasping about a hundred times. <laughs> Why would anyone think that would be entertaining? So even though it is the Amiga's piece, it gives me great pleasure to see this misophonia-inducing fool killed. He's gasped, his last gasp. But to be fair, that other bishop was gasping as well. Oh, thanks Amiga, taking care of business. And now look how well protected the Amiga's king is. It has this whole band of pawns and two castles either side. How about a high def action replay? Okay, we get the idea. And if you've had an idea for a PCB or seen someone else's that you want to order and produce, I recommend PCB Way! They're back in full production right now. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Personal Computer Bishop, doesn't it? embarrassing. <laughs> now the PC's left its king fairly exposed and, yep, the Amiga's queen puts the PC in check. And the king has no choice but to, well, get a little cornered here. Something the Miggy takes advantage of immediately. Leading to the great Lady Fractic standoff of 2020. Oh, yeah, and once again, the PC is in check. So far, I definitely would say the Amiga is having a far better game. Wait, is it? Are they? Okay, it is on. advertises itself as humorous. Mm. Babe, what are you doing? Thank you. 
So the Amiga's well-traveled knight doubles back on itself to put the PC in check again. And having failed at that, the knight embarks on some porn abuse. And as the PC porn continues its journey down the board, well, it seems to be open season on knights fishing for prawns. And here's why the Amiga did that, let's put the PC in check again. With the PC again invading it, yep, you guessed it, more porn abuse. I think it's actually better when it's sped up, don't you? And just for a change, let's kill a pawn. Oh, trying to work off some lockdown weight. And our pawn, well not our pawn, the Amiga's pawn, puts the king in check again. Burn off some more calories. And the advancing pawns again put the king in check. Although another reason they advance is to get to the end of the board, so they can substitute for a better piece. Can't we all give peace a chance? But the king's got other ideas, it's moved itself into position where it could actually take that knight that was killing all its pawns. But with the Amiga having moved its castle, the PC instead decides to, well, kill some pawns for itself. But the Amiga isn't going to stand for that. This time the Amiga's pawn is going to take out the knight. Oh, how the turntables. Uh, you know. And yep, as predicted, the king is going to take out the Amiga's knight. I've got to hand it to the Amiga, it lost its knight, but it wins on the animation on that one. Yeah, okay, hand that one. <laughs> Although on second thoughts, oh, I guess he's American. The Amiga's finally bringing its king out into play, and yeah, immediately gets put in check by the PC and retreats, as does the castle. And the Amiga's rook retaliates by putting the PC's king in check. Now it looks like the PC's castle has just moved itself into position, where it's one space away from having check against the king. And if another piece can corner the king, the PC will have checkmate. And the Amiga's about to lose another pawn. Oh, actually, maybe maybe not. Looks like he's... Oh, no, the king's just going to pay him some money. You should go get it. Go get it, Nike. Yeah, there... Ah. <laughs> oh, I love it. He's half the man he used to be. It looks like there's only one move that the PC could make, and yes, it moves into position, cornering the king. Now the Amiga's king can't move up the board because the PC's king would be able to capture it. And that's checkmate. But we do still have the fun of watching how those animations play out. Uh, 
he's half the man he used to be. <laughs> At least he laughed. from Return of the Jedi takes the crown. So let's make this even more interesting. Let's up the skill levels. Now as mentioned I can't put them both on highest settings because it would literally take one or two weeks to play one game, particularly with the Amiga's processor. However we'll set things to just below halfway. That should give us a real ramp up and you are not going to believe what a different game we're about to play watch this. Oh, and speaking of different, we can choose a different location as well to keep things interesting. So unlike all of us right now, let's take this game outside. However, even on this setting, the Amiga was taking up to an hour per move. So I'm going to put it in warp mode. That speeds things up exponentially. The one downside is it means we'll have no sound on the Amiga side of things. But you've got the idea of how all that sounds by now anyway. It's kind of like this. And the Amiga's silent but deadly response. I'm wondering what would happen if I put that sound over the Amiga's graphics. Somehow it kind of works. Anyway, to make game two pass a little quicker, I'm going to just cut back on the commentary a bit and leave you with music and machines. skip button but oh sorry I'm not meant to be commenting
this really is shaping into a fascinating game. I mean, look at this. The Amiga has got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. The PC's only got two. Okay, well, the Amiga has one less now. But still, the PC is doing this dance of continually getting checked against the Amiga. But the Amiga's pawn is moving closer to that final space where it could substitute for a much more powerful piece. And that's really why the PC is doing so well. It's got the queen. The Amiga hasn't got one. Yep, so the Amiga's managed to evade another check, which gives it an opportunity to move that pawn forward. And I'm betting, yep, it moves it there and substitutes for a queen. We can choose that option on the PC. The pawn has been promoted to queen and immediately puts the PC in check. PC queen puts herself in its... Oh, and they're going to get into a right royal battle here. Hmm. Oh, oh. the sleeve it goes. Okay, so the Amiga's back where it was now. Still no queen. The PC put the Amiga in check, but stood too close to the king, which means the king can take the queen. So now neither side has a queen, and the PC only has one piece left. It's a one-piece PC. But yep, the Amiga gets another substitution to a queen. And now I think the PC's days might be numbered. The queen is setting herself up on the right of the board, hoping to trap the king. But we're going to need another piece to corner him. This could be the king's downfall. He's moving to the side where he could become cornered. Even more cornered there. That's not, I mean, he's really got nowhere to go. He probably should have resigned by now. And that's it. The Amiga has decided to check mate. And we've seen this animation before. Wow. I set both machines to almost halfway up the skill level, which could take hours per move on the Amiga. And still, the Amiga from 1988 beat a game released in 2015, uh, one, two, three, carry the seven, 27 years later. How is that possible? Well, I reached out to one of Interplay's founders, Becky Heinemann, and she told me the original chess engine used in Battle Chess 1988 was something they developed in-house. And this new version is just an improved version of that. To give you a comparison, the new version has a skill rating of ELO 2400, whereas the original is only around 1500. And when I bumped up the difficulty, it should have moved them both closer to their potentials. Yet somehow the Amiga won. Now it could just have been chance, but I can't help hoping, I mean thinking, that the Amiga is just somehow still like that grand old master playing in the park with a few tricks up its sleeve. Or maybe there really is something to Perry's law after all. So let's have a very quick unofficial look at a sort of leaderboard of where we're up to with these versus videos. Look away now for 20 seconds if you're going to watch those later. But you can see through the tests that we've done, the old computer, well, I won't spoil it if you're not watching, but yeah, you'd really expect things to have escalated far more over 30 years. It really is quite fascinating. Well, speaking of old data, it's past my bedtime, but I'll be back soon. So for now, thanks for watching. Subscribe and join below. And cheerio.
Hey, you suck. <laughs>